state and testified you want to. You'll know. Amen. Praise God. Turn to the book of Exodus. Again, it's good to be here. Praise God. Two of my, I guess everybody's got great scriptures in the Bible, but two of my greatest scriptures, is one in the Old Testament, were the prophet... Nathan come to David and said, the Lord has put away thy sins. And then in the New Testament, my other greatest scripture, where Jesus spoke unto that man sick of the palsy in that house, thy sins be forgiven. So I'm glad this morning that our sin has been forgiven and been washed by the blood of Christ. Amen. The scripture teaches us in John chapter 3, you must be born again. Praise God. It's got nothing to do with the thought I'm going to preach, but i just like to tell you, you must be, you've got to be born again to go to heaven. Amen. Praise God. We can be a good person, but you've got to be born again. Exodus chapter 3, uh, verse 9. When you get it, say amen. amen. All right. Now, therefore, behold, this is God talking unto Moses. The cry of the children of Israel is coming to me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly. I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God upon this mountain. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shall thou say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. Would you pray for Brother Staten before we preach? Father God of Israel, we thank you this morning, God, for Brother and Sister Joe and their family, God, for this church, God, for what you're doing, Lord, for what we felt here this morning, God, the spirit of a living God, the singing God, the anointing, God, I ask you to give me that anointing. Give me that ability this morning. God, to speak to this people, God. Oh, in the name of the Son of God, we pray. Lord, I ask you in a special way, touch us again in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I want to preach a simple thought here this morning that the Lord has spoken unto me. Just a little simple thought. You're not alone. Amen. Praise God. And I stand before you this morning. I surely wouldn't want to do this by myself. I wouldn't even attempt to do it. by. Myself. I wouldn't even try to. But praise God, I can believe this morning that we're not alone. 
Don't you never let the devil tell you that you hadn't got faith. Every one of us was born with a measure of faith into this world. We just need to exercise it. So the devil's a liar from the beginning if he's trying to put in your heart that you don't have faith. Praise God, you do. Amen, we do have faith. We do believe in God. Praise God, we do know, uh, as Sister Staten said, we've been saved 42 years. Amen, praise God. And we do know that the Lord hand, Lord's hand has been in our life. Amen, praise God, we do know, praise God, that. And I'm gonna hold on to that even in the midst of a storm. And we all go through storms. The Bible said there is no temptation taken you, but such is common to man, but God is faithful who will make a way for an escape. Amen, though the temptation may be, it may be tough, it may be hard, amen, but God is not gonna save us and hang us up somewhere and let us dry out, praise God, amen. We can count on God, amen, in that scripture there in that one verse where God spoke unto Moses and said, and he said in verse 12, certainly I will be with thee, praise God. The old saying without a shout of a doubt, I believe God is going to be with us, praise God. He'll walk with us in the thin, he'll walk with us in the thick, and he'll be with us in the midst of the storm. You know they sing that song, in the midst of the storm, praise God, amen. God, if God be for you, who can be against you? I thank God he's for me. Praise God, amen. There's a lot of things come our way and I've heard some testimonies here this morning. Amen, praise God. And I know, uh, I know Brother Myers is an outstanding preacher, praise God, amen. But God sent this word to you this morning to tell you that you're not alone, that you're not walking in this path by yourself. Ooh, I felt chilly bumps on that one. Praise God, amen. Remember looking on uh, the little plaque they had on walls, and some of you may still have it, uh, where they saw the two sets of footprints? Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. And, and the person that, uh, it was either a woman or a man, either one of them, praise God, uh, she was uh, talking to the Lord, said, Lord, uh, amen, I always saw these two sets of footprints. Uh, and by those uh, in that dream or that vision that I saw, I knew you was walking with me. Yeah. Amen, I knew that you were right by my side. How many knows that this morning that the Lord is right by you? Praise God. That the Lord is holding your hand. I'll tell you something this morning. He won't let your hand go. If your hand leaves the hand of the Lord, you'll take it yourself from him. But I don't want to take it. I want him to hold my hand, don't you? Amen. The little story went on. Praise God as she continued in life. And, and after a while, she, she went through such of a hard trial. And, and every one of us has been through, the as again, the thick and the thin. Praise Every one of us has been brought through the fire. Praise God. Brought through uh, temptations. Brought through even uh, parts of tribulation in our life. Praise God. That, that just wasn't so pleasant. But I can't remember one time after over 42 years that the Lord has never left us or forsaken us. Amen, praise God. I'll tell you, she went along on and through life and after a while she just saw that one set of footprints. You saw that before and you've read that but oh, she began to question the Lord and, and I'll tell you, we're just human beings. If you don't believe it and I found that out here just a couple of weeks ago, I busted that thumb. About a month ago, I busted that thumb. And it wasn't enough, I got that one. Praise God, I found out I'm still flesh. Yeah. Amen, praise God. And I'll tell you, it hurts when you hit it with a hammer or something. Amen, praise God, it'll even bleed. Amen, if you aren't careful. But I found out, praise God, that I, uh, I'm still flesh and I hadn't been raptured yet and I can still make mistakes uh, and I can still do things wrong, but the Lord's not gonna throw me out, out under somewhere. He's gonna walk with us. He's gonna commune with us. He might put the spanking on her back uh, and bring us back to him, but you're not alone this morning, praise God. Amen. I said, you're not alone today. If God be for you, who's gonna be against you? Amen, she went on through life and 
And she saw that one time that uh, she saw one set the footprints. Uh, amen. Praise God. And she questioned the Lord about that situation. God, why was you not with me in the darkest hour I ever been in, the darkest trial I ever went through? Why was you not with me? And the Lord spoke unto her and said, I was with you. I was carrying you in that dark hour. And I want to tell you something today. Amen. The Lord's going to carry us. He's going to carry us through the trials amen through everything that we face praise the Lamb of God he's still God and he'll always be God and the message this morning is to you that you're not alone somebody lift your hands and praise the Lord here glory to the Lamb of God hallelujah hallelujah praise the Lamb of God oh we don't have to walk if you're not saved this morning, I don't know everybody's heart, and, and only God does that. I only know mine. Yeah, come on. I only know where I stand with God. Yeah. Amen, praise God. But you're not alone. The Bible said in Psalm 1, said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in the law does he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Amen. His leaves shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. I'll tell you, if the Lord be with you, if the Lord be with you, all this worry and trouble that we face, amen, just lay it down at the feet of Jesus. Cast every burden upon him, for he careth for you. Why don't somebody thank God here this morning? I said, why don't somebody lift your hand and pray Praise the Lord. Praise God. Uh, hallelujah. I wouldn't want to be caught alone this morning without God. If you're not saved this morning, amen, you're walking down a path that you don't really want to be walking down. Amen. Praise God. You're not alone today. Amen. If God be for you, who can be up against you? Well, Brother Staten, you keep on quoting that. That's right. I know I'm quoting it. If God be for you, who can be against you? David said it like this. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. And then David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. <laughs> Glory to God, thou art with me. I don't have to pass from this life to the other alone, praise God. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, thou comfortest me, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy. My God, that's good to know that the Lord God standeth with us. Death has no dominion over the saints of God. Amen. Amen. We came out of darkness. We came out of death. For in him was life, and the life was a light of man, and the light shone in darkness, and the darkness covered into it. We are children of God walking in the light. Amen. 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 I can see because he gave me light. Amen. Praise God. Man, hallelujah. There's been, been a, many a dark nights and days, but there was always light because of Jesus. Yeah. And I realize my age, uh, I'm getting on up there where it's fixing to leave one way or the other, either the trumpet or the grave. Hey, three score and 10, 70. I'm fixing to turn 69 Thursday, June the 8th. <laughs> Praise God. That's it. And then bingo. <laughs> Praise God. 
But he said some are stronger, some four score. I could care less. Yeah. Yea, yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Yeah. I'm going to pass on the life, aren't you? Come on now. Praise God. I heard the testimony. There's, there's people already over there, you know, that uh, the testimony this morning, the brother was testifying. Sister's already over there. The Bible said, I has not seen nor ear heard or entered into the heart of man what God has got prepared for them that love him. Yeah. No wonder Paul said, I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. I have finished my course. He was ready to get out of here. Praise the Lamb of God. Amen. He knew that God was with him. The minute they was going to chop his head off, he was going to a different place, a place where there's no more pain, no more sorrow, no more death, no more graveyards, no more funeral homes, no more hospital, no more shots, no more medicine. Ah, somebody, thank God. We're going to a place where God's prepared for the saints of God. Come out here. Let's glorify the Son of God. Well, lift your hands and praise God today. Glory to God. Jesus tried to tell the Jews that. He said, let not your heart be troubled. He said, if you believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I'll come again and receive you myself. Glory. Let's praise him here. Praise God. We're not alone. These people that's come to us says, well, how do, why do you live the way you do? I don't understand it. How do you, you don't never have no fun. <laughs> Glory. Come on. The joy of the Lord is my strength. There's nothing but joy in this thing. There's nothing but fun, praise God. Why? Because I'm not loaded down with darkness. And I'm not loaded down with death. You know what we're loaded down with? Life and more abundantly. Praise God. Ha, ah, hallelujah. We're not alone today. I said we're not alone today. It's the greatest thing ever happened to us. It's getting born again and saved. Amen. I haven't been walking along for 42 years. And I'm rejoicing in his spirit. Amen. God told Moses, Certainly, I will be with thee. Yeah. Moses, it's a sure thing. Praise God, I'm gonna be with you. Yeah. Yeah. Amen, praise God. Amen, and when you uh, deliver them out of the hand of Pharaoh, it'll be a token unto you. It'll be a sign that I am with you. Right. You remember when you first got saved? Oh, what a sign it was. I remember when I got saved, I stood up and I said, Lord, it's 26 then. I was out in my backyard. I had been to church twice. One to get married and somebody tricked me into going. <laughs> Praise God. But that one that tricked me into going, I didn't get saved that night. I got under conviction, but I never got saved. I did get under conviction, man. I didn't know what it was, but hey, man, I was miserable for two years. <laughs> There's a difference, praise God, of be God being with you and God dealing with you. All right. <laughs> Amen. Right. Praise God. I said, God, on that day that I got saved, I stood up, it was on a Tuesday morning, March 25th, 1975. I stood up, I, uh, I was down there praying and I said, God, if I can be saved, I'd like to be saved. He didn't give me a, a second. 
bam, it happened. I felt something come in and I felt something go out. Come on. Lot as a feather, Brother Joe. Yeah. Glorious. Amen. And man, when that came in and that darkness went out, life and light come in and death and darkness went out. Yeah. I looked up to him and I said, where have I been all my life to miss such peace and joy that I have now? Glory. And after 42 years, it's still a joy. Yeah. It's still a peace. Man, praise God, I'm not alone still after 42 years. Glory. He said, Moses, certainly I'm going with you now. Yeah. Amen. But Moses is like we are a lot of times. <laughs> Amen. And still, that little doubt that the devil brings in. Praise God. Yeah. But Moses, he, amen, praise God, he was standing there and he was, he was wondering and thinking and, uh, and, and, and you know how it would trouble you. We're all flesh, as I said. Uh, amen. If you don't believe it, you try that hammer out. And he stands there and he, he thinks and God knows what he's thinking. He said, Moses, what do you got in your hand? He said, I got a rod. He said, well, cast it down. And he cast it down and it turned into a serpent. And Moses fled from it. I can't believe you. I don't like snakes. I either shoot them or cut their head off. I don't like them. I don't like spiders. Hey, Amen. I don't like them. If you want to put me on the run and make me jump, just let one crawl through there. Amen. Amen. And, and the Lord said, well, pick him up by the tail. And he picked him up by the tail and it turned back into a rod. And he said, Moses, stick your hand in your bosom. Come on. He stuck it in there. Brought it out and it was leprosy. He said, put it back in. He brought it out and was back made whole. God was telling him by proof yeah. that he would stand with him. And how many times has God moved for us in special ways, Brother Myers? Yeah. Letting us know. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I remember years ago, my son, he's 34 now, my daughter's 43. Amen. Praise God. But my son, when that boy was born after he was nine months old, he came down, we was preaching revival, Brother Doyle Williams. Remember him? More Haven. Anyway, he's gone on now. Uh, praise God. More Haven Church of God. And, and uh, we went down there for a three-day revival, and that was, gosh, that was a long time ago. Praise God. And uh, that boy, Kate, wasn't about nine months old, and he had caught some kind of a pink eye disease from somebody in that church. See, we're not exempt just because we're preachers. Don't you think the devil don't fight you that he don't double fight us? I don't know how many demons of hell and this preacher tell you the same thing that we have to wade through sometimes just to preach the word of God. But anyway, that boy came down with an eye disease, pink eye. And it got in his blood and his little old eye was big as a baseball out like that. And so, you know, natural, we're gonna take it to the emergency room, wakes up with that. And we took him to that hospital in Wachula and they... They finally, after came out and, and charged me $75, which that was a lot of money back then. Amen, still is, that's right. Amen, to a certain extent. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's all right to have a good time. Smile. You get out of these walls, that devil's waiting on you. Amen, rejoice. But anyway, they uh, got the $75 and said, we can't help him, but we're going to send you to another hospital. That's the way they do. One gets their part and the next one gets theirs. $75 a 
uh, based on 125 a week. That's what I was making back then. So that was like a thousand dollars right now. Amen. But it is still a good bit of money, seventy-five dollars. But anyway, we took him to the 22 miles away from Wachula, 20 to Avon Park, where they sent us. And that lady, that doctor, I forget what you call him, a child doctor. That's right. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. She came out finally after an hour or two in there. Says, we're going to give him antibiotics. We're going to have to keep him. That boy's in bad shape. Said, he's either going to die or be a vegetable for the antibiotics don't help him. Anybody ever been there? Anybody ever asked, where are you, God? Where are you, God? I mean, Lord, I, I, I've served you. I've been faithful in paying tithes. That's what I told him. And God, what little bit we have, we share with others. And we pray and we fast. And we're faithful to the church. I just don't understand. Anybody ever said that? Does anybody know where I'm, where I'm at this morning? Does anybody need this thought? You're not your own. You're not on your own. There we were. Antibiotics don't help him. He's going to die or be a vegetable. She knew what she was saying. It got in his blood system. So they kept him in that hospital. So Staten stayed with him, and I tried to work. I did. I tried to work. I'll tell you when stuff when your own children. It bothers you worse than anything else. I've learned that. <clears throat> I learned something from that. And I preached to a lot of people who was lost that had children, was able to get into their hearts. I learned something about that on, over their children. And this is the way I'd present it. I know I'm just preaching everywhere like a shotgun. I just weren't scattering it. But I just lay it out there, the path that you're following, your children's going to follow and if you go to hell, there's a chance they're going. That's how we feel about our children. Well, I was deeply hurt, Sister Staten, too. And so I left her at the hospital and, and, and went on and went to work the next day. And I tried to work. It just wasn't going right. I got home that day and went over there and antibiotics wasn't working at all. That doctor told Sister Staten that before I got there, said, them antibiotics is not working. That boy's going to die. They don't work. That's what she said. I went to work the next day. I went back over there that night. Same thing. Antibiotics wasn't working. I tell you, just like you said this morning, Sister, when you get down like that, it's just, you can't pray. What you said, that was so true. You just can't hardly do anything but think. What if? What if? And so the next morning, after I after went that night, same thing. The next morning I went to work and I just couldn't work. I couldn't do nothing. I just throwed up my hands and, and tears running down my face. I said, God, I don't know what to do. And there was a big orange grove across that road there and a big old grapefruit tree. It's been pushed up. It was probably 50 foot high, ceiling grapefruit. And I walked across that road and I got under that grapefruit tree and I knelt down on my knees. And I believe I ain't never wept like that in my life. Amen. Amen. And I wept, and I wept, I don't know if it was a couple of hours, just weeping and begging God to touch that boy. 
Finally, I got a hold of myself and I got up. I went right on to the house. Didn't care nothing about that job or nothing. I just went on to the house. It was all history. I didn't care nothing about that boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. And Brother Myers, when I went home, took a shower and went on to the hospital. When I got over there, it was about one o'clock. And when I walked in, Sister Staten come to me and says, guess what? I said, I don't know. So the doctor came in and said, there's been a great change. A great change. Said the antibiotics is working. And said if he keep working, he'll be go home tomorrow. Amen, praise God. But you know something? I found out that I wasn't alone. I found out that God was with me all the time. He was just waiting on me to break. He was just waiting on me to bust. And maybe some of you this morning, that's what God is waiting on you, just to break and bust, where he can help you, praise God. We'll see those tears come down that cheek and cry and pray and seek his face. There's times that the pastor's not gonna be able to help you because you've got to help yourself. Somebody, thank God today. You're not alone. I said, God said to tell you, you're not alone. If God be for you. Hallelujah. Amen. The scripture brings out, I'll go with you even unto death. Now, isn't that a promise? Isn't that something to look forward to? I mean, close her eyes and breathe her last breath and, and fade into a different world. Glory. My, praise God. I tell you, I wouldn't be wanting to caught one second without God. We're in the hour of darkness and filth. Some of you that's my age or older, you've never seen such filth in your life. It's everywhere. Every corner. Used to be a shame and abomination. It's up eye now. That's what happened, amen, in Sodom and Gomorrah. Amen, they wanted the whole deal but God heard their cry and he dealt with it and believe me brother and sister he's going to deal with it one of these days <laughs> you better believe it they're hollering now <laughs> hallelujah they want their rights now there is no right with that spirit it's all ungodly Dear God, I'm glad I'm saved this morning. Praise God. I'm glad I can, amen, still walk, amen, in a country that's free. Still pray, praise God. Amen, Lamb of God, that, amen, glory to God that we got freedom to pray. Somebody thank God. I'll tell you, one of the greatest men in the Bible, praise God, called Job. Look what he went through. Look what he suffered. Amen, he lost all of his children, 10 children. Amen, praise God. The devil stole everything he had, took everything he had. Amen. But did Job curse God? No. Job didn't curse God. But when the devil went to God, he was, the Bible said, going to and fro. He presented himself to God with the sons of God. And God asked the devil, said, what are you doing here, Satan? Lucifer, what are you doing here? He said, I've been going to and fro. In other words, he was saying, there's not a man that I can't overcome. And God said, well, what about my servant Job? But I want to tell you something here this morning. The devil, if he was ever right, he was right when he said, you've got a hedge wrapped around Job. In other words, the devil was saying unto God, you're with him and I can't do nothing with him. Is the Lord God with you this morning? If he's with you, the devil cannot do nothing with you. Glory, oh, hallelujah. I can't see that clock, brother. I don't want to bore y'all to death or go too long. Amen. But if you don't get nothing out of this message, remember that. You're not alone. Well, the Lord told the devil, God pulled up the hedge, said, go to it. Amen. But you can't touch his body. Is that what he said? His flesh. Can't do nothing with him. Take everything he got. And he did. Job was a priest in his day. 
Amen. He offered sacrifices unto the Lord with his animals and the devil took all his animals. Took everything but his wife. Amen. And I ain't got nothing to say bad about Sister Job. I'll leave that alone. <laughs> time to speak and a time to refrain from speaking or stuff like that. So he did. He went and took everything he had except his wife. Lucifer, the devil, is not going to quit. He went back, Brother Myers. And he presented himself back to God, same question, to, and he answered, staying to and fro. He said, well, how about my Job? He hadn't cursed me. He said, well, you put skin to skin. You touch his body, his flesh, and see what he'll do. He said, okay, devil. He said, you go do that. But you can't take his life. Meaning that God was still with Job. You're not alone, Job. I'm with you. And the devil did. He smote him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet with balls. And I'll tell you, it's miserable. And, and Job came to the conclusion, I've got nothing else to offer God. So Job put on his sackcloth and he sat in the same ashes. I don't believe that was ashes of garbage. He sat into the same ashes where he had offered them sacrifices unto God and offered himself unto God. Now, what are you gonna do with that, devil? When everything's gone, when it seemed like there's no hope, then, praise God, you hope anyhow. When it seems like the devil's destroyed everything we got and there's nothing left, then we believe on God. We trust in God because he's not gonna let you alone. He's gonna be with you. I said he's gonna be with you in the midst of the storm. Somebody lift your hands and praise the Lord. I'm gonna read a scripture here and I'm gonna close here. Praise God. Glory. Hallelujah. Psalms 27 and 1, listen to what David said. It was David that cried out, cast me not away from thy presence, O Lord. Amen. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Amen. David said in Psalms 27 and 1, he said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. You believe the word of God? Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. Praise God. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, we will serve the Lord. Glory. Would you stand this morning? Remember, remember the word. You're not alone. We're not by ourselves. Thank you, brother. God bless you. You're not alone. Glory to God. Don't you feel his hand touching your hand? Don't you feel him with the grip of his hand? Don't you feel the power that comes through that hand? Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for giving us all, God, another chance. God, for feeding your sheep this morning. God, for helping thy people, God, through thy word. Thank you for this church. God, thank you for this pastor and his family. Thank you, God, for all things, God, this folks here today. I discern this going through things, oh, that's so hard, so troublesome. But, God, I know that your hand 
Oh, God, when it touches our hand, you'll move it all in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray this right now, this altar service, the greatest of the whole church service, that you would help your people, encourage them and strengthen them and touch them, God. In the name of the Son of God, praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's just meditate on the name of the Lord this morning. Brother Joe, I'll give it to you. And name. Praise the Lord. Everyone that's on your feet this morning. I want every head bowed and every eye closed this morning. There have been a tremendous amount of people that have fought the enemy even this last week. But I know this morning that God's heart is toward his people. If you're here this morning and you know without a shadow of a doubt, no doubt in your mind that God sent this message for you. If nobody else, it was for you. While your head is bowed and your eyes are closed, consider this morning without hesitation that you step out by faith quickly and come to the altar. Saints of God are praying this morning. You're here today, and if you really trust that the Lord is able to give you strength, he's able to fortify your spirit this morning. I want you to come right now. You say, Pastor Myers, this has been one of the worst weeks of my life. Maybe you have fought the enemy. Maybe you've got a family member, a friend, or somebody who has been betwixt tragedy, trouble, sorrow, heartache, and all of these things. Here you are this morning, able to tap into what the Lord has for you. Brother and Sister Farmer, if you are capable of coming this morning to play something for me, if you'll come this morning quickly.